back. And hey, it is so great, of course, to see you here with me today. Guys, make no mistake, you get it? <laughs> because this is a mistake video. <laughs> There are tons of things that you can do to mess up a photo shoot. Now, whether you're into portraits, architecture, landscape, sports, or something in between, capturing a beautiful shot requires you to get many different things just right. This means you need to minimize your mistakes. So, that got me thinking. What are some of the most common mistakes photographers make? To figure this out, I did some reading. I asked some other photographers. I thought about my own photography journey and all the mistakes that I've made along the way. And the result of all that research in that time is, well, this list of things that you should avoid. Now, this video, guys, is geared towards beginners. But more experienced photographers, even seasoned veterans, still make mistakes when shooting a photo. With that in mind, stick around to the end of this video and I think you're going to learn a thing or two about how to minimize your mistakes and take much improved photos. So pull up a seat, let's go! Okay, mistake number one guys, not printing your work. I recently recorded a video on this topic, so check the link below to scope it out. The gist of the video is that printing your photos shouldn't be an option. Matter of fact, printing your photos is part of the printing process of creating an image. It should be as much part of your workflow as actually taking the photo or editing it. Now, guys, I'm not saying that you have to print out every single photo that you ever take, but printing photos on a regular basis gives you a chance to inspect your work in greater detail, see how it is different from how it looks on your computer screen, and it helps you learn what you need to do next time to improve your results. Seriously, print out a photo of yours and see how different it looks in print than on screen. You might find, as I have many times, that the colors just aren't what you expected or the elements in the background are, aren't quite as sharp and so forth. It really is an informative experience that helps you learn. Mistake number two, not using your histogram. When you take a photo and you look at the LCD on the back of your camera to check the exposure, guys, you're not getting good information here. The LCD's brightness is impacted by the brightness level that you set it to. Your ability to see the LCD depends on the ambient light as well. If you're outside shooting in super bright day, guys, it is hard as heck to see that dang thing. Instead of using the LCD to check the exposure, you should be using your camera's histogram. Now, the histogram shows you the graph of the shadows, midtones, and the highlights in the shot. Since it's a graph, you get a very precise idea of whether the image is well exposed, underexposed, or overexposed. If the shot is underexposed, the graph will be shifted to the left. If it's overexposed, the graph is going to be shifted to the right. What you want is something like this, where the bulk of the pixels are right in the midtone area, and the shadows and the highlights fall off towards the edges. It really is that simple to use, and it's one of the best tools that you have at your disposal for getting well-exposed images. Now, be sure to check the description below for a link to an in-depth tutorial on histograms over at Photography Talk. Mistake number three, shooting in full auto. Now, when I started photography, I shot in full auto, and heck, you probably did as well. But if you're still shooting in full auto, guys, it might be time for a change. When you're a newbie, full auto definitely makes things easier for you. You don't need to worry about changing exposure settings, which allows you to pay more attention to things like composition and framing up your shot. But at some point, full auto becomes a crutch and a barrier to you advancing as a photographer. After all, full auto puts all the control in the hands of the camera, and while it's okay sometimes, eventually you need to learn to control things like aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Now you don't have to go from full auto to jumping into full manual either, but Give Aperture Priority a try if you want to blur the background like in a portrait or you want to photograph landscapes and you want to maximize the depth of field. Try Shutter Priority if you're photographing action and you want to freeze or blur movement. In both cases, you have more control of the exposure, but you still get a little help from the camera. Now, I don't have time to end this video to go into a deep dive into aperture priority or shutter priority modes, so check out the description below to a link to a tutorial on shooting modes on Photography Talk. Mistake number four, not shooting in RAW. If you look up cliche photography tips, shooting RAW is probably right at the top. But I've made this mistake recently, in fact. Just earlier this year, uh, no, actually, it was at the end of last year. It was just right after I got my Canon EOS R. I was down in Oceanside photographing the pier, and it was supposed to be an absolute epic sunset. The colors ended up being, eh, decent. They weren't epic, but it was still worth the trip getting down there. When I got home, I couldn't wait to edit the photos. I sat down, got them into my computer, 
And then you can imagine my surprise when I saw that every single photo I took was JPEG. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, JPEG. Now I could be lame and blame this mistake on the fact that I only had this camera at this point for three days and this was technically my first shoot with it. But instead, I'm gonna man up and fully admit that I should have checked and verified that the camera was set to RAW. The photos turned out okay, but when you shoot in JPEG, you have fewer options and much less leeway when it comes to editing your images than you would had you had the raw files. The moral of the story is twofold. First, shoot in RAW to maximize your creative possibilities, and second, turn down the arrogance and learn from your mistakes. Even seasoned photographers screw up. Mistake number five, not moving yourself or something in the frame to get a better shot. I fully admit there are times when I'm just lazy and subtle for a photo that's okay. But that's a mistake because selling for a photo isn't really going to get you anywhere. Instead, there's a ton of value in committing yourself to moving around. Sometimes moving a few feet to the left or a few feet to the right make a world of difference in how your photos are composed. The same is true for changing eye level and getting a shot lower to the ground or higher than usual. Try looking for multiple locations as well. The overlook you thought that would have the very best view of a gorgeous landscape might not be as awesome as the overlook just a little bit further up the trail. Likewise, when you frame up your shots, look at the edges of the frame. If there's distracting elements that make their way into the shot, guys, move them. <laughs> that photo of your kid playing on the floor in the living room will be much better if the leaves from the house plant aren't jutting into the shot. Take five seconds and move the plant, reshoot your photo. That way all the attention is on your kid and not on the green blobs along the edges. This is all about training your eye to see what's important and what can be eliminated from the shot to make it better. The cleaner photos, the more concise and simplified they are and the more successful they will be. Mistake number six, not planning ahead. Going out, taking photos is so much fun. Doing all the planning and preparation ahead of time, eh. Not so much fun. While I'm usually good about planning my photography outings ahead of time, every so often I get a little cocky and think that I can just wing it. But then it always, always comes back and bite me in the ass, eh, most of the time. So, you want an example? I'll give you an example. Last summer, after a couple Death Valley photo shoot reschedules, I finally said, screw it. Let's do it this weekend. I drove up there on a Friday afternoon with the intent to shooting the Milky Way. Guys, I had some serious killer shots in mind and I could not wait to get up there. Not only did I get stuck in a five hour road closure delay due to fires, but when I got up to Death Valley and expected to see the brilliant Milky Way goodness in the sky, there was a full moon. Womp, womp. <laughs> So instead of nabbing the epic Milky Way shots I had in my head, the trip was a bust. It's hard to photograph the Milky Way when you have a full moon smack right in front of it. Now, had I taken a moment, literally guys, just a few minutes to check the moon phases and the traffic, I would have saved myself a ton of time in the car all for nothing. This whole planning thing applies to all kinds of photography, not just landscapes. Sure, sitting down planning a photo shoot isn't exactly fun as taking the photos, but in my example shows, sometimes if you don't plan ahead, there may not be a photo shoot to enjoy anyway. Mistake number seven, not checking the background. Just a moment ago, I mentioned the importance of checking the sides of the frame, and if something is in the shot that shouldn't be, you should move it or move yourself to get it out of the frame. A related tip is check the background of your shot. Years ago, I took a quick snapshot of my son with my phone, and it was a great shot of his smiling little face. Unfortunately, it was such a hasty shot that I didn't notice the lamppost in the background that looked like it was growing out of his head. The last time I checked, my wife didn't give birth to a unicorn baby, my guess is that your portrait subjects aren't unicorn human hybrids either. When you're taking photos, take a few moments to inspect the background. Look for poles and branches that look like horns are growing out of the subject's head or body. Also, look for distracting elements in the background like a glare of a car windshield, a trash can, or a big neighbor's dog leaving a deposit on the lawn. Yeah, portraits aren't about the stuff in the background, but the stuff in the background definitely influences how good the shot can be. Mistake number eight overexposing your photos. If you're old enough to remember taking photos with film, you might remember the common advice back then was to overexpose your photos. The point of this was to try to preserve the details in the shadows. But with digital photography, it's actually better to underexpose your photo. By slightly underexposing your photos, you preserve the details in the highlight areas of your shot. This is important because it's far more difficult to recover the details of the highlights in the post-processing than it is to recover the details in the shadows. This is where the histogram comes in. Check the histogram to see the distribution of pixels in the shot. If there's a ton of pixels on the right side of the graph, your shot is overexposed. You want the majority of the pixels to be right in the middle of the graph or over the left side in order to protect those highlights. Mistake number nine, not using a tripod. 
Now, there are photographers out there that just don't like using tripods. They hate him. They complain that they're big, bulky, and complicated and take up too much time to set up and take down. But if you ask me, this is a short-sighted view of tripods. In fact, I think it's a huge mistake not to use a tripod. Let me tell you why. If your camera is on a tripod, you can get sharper images. You can take long exposure photos as well. The few seconds it takes to get your tripod set up is a great time to survey the scene and think about the composition and identify those pesky distractions around the edge of the frame or in the background. Many tripods have features that allow you to get more creative too. For example, like a center column that you can invert for a low angle shot or a panning head that enables you to pan smoothly as you shoot video. If you ask me, tripods are one of the most underrated photography accessories and they're just too valuable not to have in your camera bag. Now let's be clear, you don't have to spend a giant pile of cash for a good tripod. You can spend a hundred bucks on a solid tripod and you can see the difference it can make in your photos. Mistake number 10, not being thorough. Tell me if this sounds familiar. You get excited to shoot photos, so you grab your gear, you hop in your car, and you head to your destination and rip off a ton of images. Get back to your car, rush back home to start your editing. But when you open your images on your computer, you see that the compositions are lacking sharpness that isn't there, or you shot in JPEG instead of RAW like, uh, yeah, I did with the Pure earlier. <laughs> Like a lot of other tips on this list, this one is all about simply slowing your roll and paying attention, or at the very least, not being cocky and thinking that you're a photography Jedi master that you can wing it and still get epic results. I know I tend to rush through things sometimes, and I'm guessing, hey, you might be the same way as well, but rushing around doesn't do me or you any favors. One of the best things that you can do to minimize mistakes in photography is just to be thorough. Guys, plan ahead. Double check your camera settings, take time to compose interesting shots, move around, check the background, you get the idea. Whether you're picking up a camera for the first time today or you've been behind the lens for decades, all of these tips here are good advice to follow because all of us make mistakes. The key is to slow down, pay attention, and you can catch the mistakes before you press the shutter button. I know I've made a lot of the mistakes on the list, how about you? What photography mistakes do you make most often? Let me know in the comments down below. Where well, do you go guys? A few tips to help you get out there, prevent hopefully making some mistakes and get you taking better photos. If you found this video to be helpful, hit the like button down below. If you're currently not subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button while you're at it. Hit the bell to be notified as we come out with new videos. So get out there, put these tips to use and you get out there as well and take your best shot.